Okay. Good morning to everybody. Today we must discuss more about divergence theorem. So I decided it is worth to um, repeat some reasonings you should have done already in other courses to understand better uh, what we are doing, because soon we will need to generalize it to have information about contact forces in higher gradient continua. So I think we must understand it uh, better. And I have found uh, in Wikipedia a very nice uh, series of pictures. Uh, as you know, I'm not very good in drawing pictures. So uh, I think that it is useful if we ex use these nice pictures and I will add some uh, many, many other words to what is written here. So we should understand better this uh, part of uh, Wikipedia entry. Uh, you know, usually Wikipedia entries in mathematics are very careful. Um, there are many people who spend their time in, in writing them carefully. OK, um, maybe these are changing quickly. Uh, we will I will deposit this uh, in 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 our um, files so that we know exactly uh, which document uh, we are talking about. OK, now, as I told you, I want to repeat this. Uh, let us start with R3, so a three-dimensional volume. OK, and we have a field, a vector field, VI, defined in this, um, in this region. So in this moment, this region could be Eulerian Lagrange. We, we have a region, capital V. OK, maybe the vector it is better we call W. And we have a vector field defined inside this volume. OK, so in every point of the volume, you have V of X, W of X, and this field W is represented in coordinates like in this way, where EI is our, an orthonormal basis. Okay, and the components, therefore, the components WI are functions of X, and these components are C1. So they are continuous together with all their partial derivatives. Okay. <clears throat> now, what we want <clears throat> to understand is if I have integral over the volume V of W dot N, which is called the flux, sorry, on the boundary of V, flux of W through the surface boundary of V, Okay, so if we have this quantity, can we replace it as integral of on V on the volume of something applied to W? This is a surface area and this is a volume. Uh, so this is a surface integral and this is a volume integral. And if yes, which is, so how, how can I represent this operator? Can I represent this operator? Okay. So this is 
this is the, the, the discussion which we already did and we should repeat uh, for understanding better how we got it in order to proceed in, in our uh, reasonings. Okay, now let us think a little bit what we need for this, for getting this integral. We need, we need an inner product. So what we have, the, the, the reason for which this is called a flux is this one. If you have this velocity and if this is the normal, okay, and if you have a mass which is flowing in this way, so following having the velocity W, okay, the standard, the standard reasoning which is done is the following. I consider this amount of matter and in the unit of time, this is the mass which is passing through this surface. Okay. So in order to estimate the amount of mass which is passing through this surface in the unit of time, you must simply calculate this inner product. The cosine of this angle, so let's call it some alpha. The cosine of, of, alpha, uh, of alpha, uh, gives you the crucial uh, quantity for calculating starting from W dt. So this is a length. W is interpreted in this context as a velocity. So this gives you uh, a length, which is this one. Okay and times the area, this gives you the same volume as the amount of mass which is passing through the, uh, through the surface which we have. These are very simple reasonings you should have already done. And I simply want to remind you the, the motivation for this definition. So this amount, this quantity, is very important when you want to study the flow of a fluid in a channel, for instance. But this also plays a great role in electrodynamics and in many parts of physics, including continuum mechanics. OK, so for the moment, we are like the mathematicians. We don't uh, ask ourselves why we are interested in this kind of integrals. We simply try to understand the structure of this flux because sometimes we need to replace this volume integral into, uh, sorry, this surface integral into a volume integral here. Professor, so for, uh, 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 may I ask a question? Yes. Go Can we use that formula instead of uh, when we trying to find the, uh, how can I say, the flow rate in the open channel? Can we use that formula, right? It's one I, of. I, I think it is systematically used for yeah. this. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, this is one, but okay, uh, what I want to understand, uh, sorry, what I want to explain is, is the following. Uh, this general formula, like every mathematical formula, was born having in mind a fluid dynamical applications. Okay. However, uh, this formula, uh, changing the meaning of this vector field W, okay, became essential in many other parts of physics. 
including continuum mechanics, electrodynamics, general relativity, and things like that. So this mathematical relationship between two integrals, surface integral and volume integral, this mathematical relationship deserves an attention per se, you know, itself is important, independently of the application, which happens sometimes for the best, most useful mathematical uh, formulas. Okay, so even if we give a justification from fluid dynamics for this, okay, what we want to do now, we want to study this uh, mathematical relationship where W is not a velocity field, it is a generic field. And the only demand, of course, we need an assumption, the only demand that which are uh, required is that it is a C1 field. So you can calculate every derivative Wi over dxj. Okay? So uh, maybe somebody wanted to ask another question? Okay, let's, let's proceed. Okay, so now let us think how uh, we can, we can uh, study this first integral here, okay? So I have one body, I cut it in two parts, so I get two sub bodies, the minus side and the plus side. Okay, so let us draw in red the outer normal of the minus side. And here we have these normals. These are the these are the outer pointing normal. Ah, okay. Sorry, I'm not so uh, precise in listing the hypothesis. Of course, the boundary of V must be regular. Okay. Okay. Just one second. Let us stop this recording.